Okay, so this week we are on vacation and we're checking out northern Germany. We've driven the furthest north we have so far and we've gone to the island of Rügen. So follow along with us this week as we find out the top things to see and do and eat here in this island. Wow, this is awesome. Who would ever have thought there were beaches, white sandy beaches in Germany? We're walking down these stairs to get to the beach. So I am super pumped to see what this is gonna look like. And we're about to see it now. Wow, this is awesome. Who would ever have thought there were beaches, white sandy beaches in Germany? So to start off our trip here in the island of Rügen, uh, we wanted to start with the beach. So when moving here to Germany, uh, I did not think of Germany as having beaches. I kind of knew they had, had a coastline, but having sandy beaches was not something that I initially thought of. So this was kind of a surprise checking out this island. Okay, you guys, my expectations for this beach was a little low because I just never thought there was white sandy beaches in Germany. When you think of Germany, you think of mountains and grassy fields with cows, not beaches. But this place is awesome. It is absolutely gorgeous. The water is blue and clear. It's a little cold, but oh man, it is amazing. So the water surprisingly was actually warmer than I thought it would be. Uh, Griffin has been in the water playing and enjoying it and swimming um, and I got in with him and it really was not as cold as I thought. So that has actually been really nice especially whenever the sun was out and it was really getting hot. Getting in that cool water actually felt really good. So we are here in the middle of June and surprisingly we pretty much have the whole beach to ourselves. So that has been very nice um, to not have to worry about a ton of people and I noticed that there's not people like setting up big tents or like blaring music or anything like that sometimes in in the US you'll see that whenever you go to the beach so we're wrapping up our time here at the beach and I think this beach really did surprise us so this beach was actually really cool mm -hmm. and the sand was super soft there was not a lot of people here at all. Mm -hmm. It was very clean. We didn't see any trash. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a great beach. Yes. Like I said in the videos before, it took my breath away. It was definitely something that I was not expecting to see here in Germany. Yeah. We did note a few differences from beaches that we've been to before um, back in the States. Uh, for one thing, there's no seashells or we mm -hmm. didn't really see any. Mm -hmm. But instead, they have these really cool... Uh, colorful rocks so Griffin had a great time trying to collect mm -hmm. all these rocks that was was really neat um, also one major difference was that there were some people that were sunbathing and swimming nude which mm -hmm. coming from the US that is yeah. not very common at all mm -mm, no. um, and it was kind of mixed here there was mm -hmm. some people that were nude that were swimming and stuff and then families and stuff that were not and yeah. um, it wasn't like a specific nude beach. So that was something that was different. That's not a that's not something that's bad. It's no. just different, you know, seeing people that are mm -hmm. comfortable in their own bodies and being naked. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I forgot to mention is that getting here and parking is very easy. In fact, the parking lot is just like this open field and it's only four euro for a whole day, which is very cheap. Uh, and getting here, it was kind of funny. It doesn't even, even look like you're driving to the beach. You just drive through all these fields of different grains and all of a sudden you get to the parking lot and then uh, walk down to the beach and there it is. So that was kind of surprising to us, but 
very easy to, to get to. So today we are at the sand sculpture exhibit here in Prora and this is an indoor sand exhibit so you can visit it any time of the year um, and this year the theme is the Middle Ages so they have all these sand sculptures that are made by some of the world's best sand sculptors and uh, and you can walk through and see all the cool um, things that they've made. Adults, the tickets are $12.50 and kids, it's $9.50. Under four is free. This place is really neat. When you get looking at the structures, you just see the outside of it. And then when you really look at them, you see the little fine details and it is really cool. What did you find, Griff? A worm? Did you find Sandy? Good job. I think that's number five. One really cool thing for the kids to do while they're here is look for this little Sandy the worm. And at the end, you write down how many times you find Sandy and you fill your name and address out. And it's a little contest to win stuff. But Griffin is loving trying to find this worm. Wow. This might be the coolest thing yet. I think the exhibit was actually really cool. We really enjoyed it. We actually went through a few times and each time we went through, we saw different details uh, and different things that we'd missed. So I think it was, it was really cool. Definitely uh, a good stop here if you're here in Rugen. So not too far from the sand sculpture exhibit is the Documentation Zentrum Prora, which looks like a big abandoned warehouse, but actually was a Nazi uh, construction project from the 1930s. It was supposed to be a resort um, that housed up to 20,000 people um, as a way for workers to cheaply come and vacation. Um, but it was never completed. It was, it's actually one of the largest Nazi construction projects um, and it is now a museum. And you can come and walk around and uh, check that out. So today I don't have enough time to check this out, but if you are interested in history, I believe it's seven euros uh, per person. So you can see how part of the resort was it recently finished, um, but you can still see the old part, which was never touched. We are in the seaside town of Selen. There is an iconic sea bridge here and a beautiful pier. And at this pier, there is a submarine that you can go into and go underwater. One thing we didn't know was that the main building on the pier is actually a restaurant. And so we're gonna eat lunch here, and then we're gonna check out the rest of the pier and the submarine. So I got a Sandorn juice, which this is something that I've seen advertised here in Rugen, some type of um, fruit. I really don't know much about it, but it looks pretty good, so I'm going to try it for the first time. Wow. It's really different. It's kind of, kind of tastes citrusy. Kind of like a mango, but there's some definitely some different flavors in there that I've never tasted before. So I'm gonna let Maria try it and see if she likes it. That's really different. That's different than any juice that we have back in the States or even where we live because it's pretty tasty. So the food at the restaurant was really good. Uh, so now we just went to the end of the pier and we're waiting to get on the submarine. Okay, we made it on the submarine. 
they gave us these cool glasses. I think we're gonna watch like a 3D movie. So, it's exciting. Oh, 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 oh. It's like, you know. So we just did the submarine and now we walk back to this little town to kind of check out the shops and things like that. The submarine, it was like nine euros for an adult and I think six for kids. And if you're expecting to go underwater and see you know, lots of sea life and fish and stuff like that, that wasn't really the case. That's at least not what we saw. I saw one jellyfish swimming and that was about it. The water is pretty green and kind of murky, so you don't really get to see a lot. But yeah, I, I think it was okay. I don't think I would do it again, um, but I, maybe for the first time, I think it was worth it. The next thing we are checking out here in Rügen is the Raging Roland steam train. So the steam train here uh, stops at over six different towns that you can stop at to shop and look around. You can get a one-way ticket or what we're gonna do is get a day ticket. So that way we can hop on and hop off and ride as many times as we want today. You can either buy your tickets here at a little counter or you can buy them on the train. We got off the train at one of the last stops that they have. It's called Gorin. We're gonna check it out. There's a pier here and a playground and a lot of cute little shops and some places maybe just to get some coffee. So while we wait for our next train, we're just gonna sit here on the beach and let Griffin play and just soak in all the beautiful scenery. So one thing that is unique to this area is this beach chair. This is called a Strandkorb, uh, which was invented here in Northern Germany. And it's a beach chair that um, You'll see a lot of uh, beaches, they have them lined up and you can rent them for the day. Here, I think it's like 12 euros for a day. And they have these leg rests that pull out and you can raise and lower the seat rest. You can uh, uh, decline it to take a nap and then have the nice sunshade and wind shade to protect you from the, the wind and sun because these beaches can be really windy. So one thing that's nice about these is that you can just rent this instead of having to bring uh, your chairs and your tent, your umbrella and all that stuff uh, and lug it all the way across the beach, you can just come and rent this. So we're back on the train. We ended up just getting a round trip ticket instead of the day ticket uh, because it was starting to get a little bit late. So we took the train the furthest east it will go to Gorin. Uh, I had a good time just walking around, checking out that small town and spending some time on the beach. Now we're going to head back um, to Selen, but I think this is a great way to see a lot of the, the, the cool beach towns. Um, so it, should, it would just be really cool to get a day ticket and just ride around all day uh, and just pop into the, the few different towns and check out some shops and restaurants. Today we are in the harbor town of Schraproda and we're gonna take a ferry to another island called Hidden Z. So we got here a little early and we had a chance to walk around uh, this, little, this little town and it is really cool. We saw lots of um, houses that have like the thatch roofs mm -hmm. and it looks, looks like a really unique coastal town. Yes. Yeah. So now we're gonna get on the ferry and it takes about 45 minutes to get to the island and the island we're going to does not have cars. It's a car-free island. So we're just gonna walk around, and but they do have um, horse-drawn carriages that you can get on. Mm -hmm. There on the island, they do have a couple lighthouses. I think we'll try to check out one of them and just check out the, the shops and the restaurants and stuff there.
We just made it to the island of Hidden Z. And so now we're just gonna walk around, uh, check out some of the, uh, the landscapes here. This is also a national park. So we wanna check out the National uh, Park Center and hopefully make it to one of the lighthouses. We have to catch the boat back at 545. 545. Mm -hmm. We got here and it's 115. So we have a little over four hours to check this place out. As we're walking along this path where you can see all the horses behind us, it is so beautiful and just amazing to see the horses running in the field and everyone riding their bikes and walking. It's just a really neat island. So this island is actually part of a national park. So we stopped here at the National Park Center, which is halfway between Kloster and Vit, right on the uh, hiking and biking trail. So now we're gonna stop here and check it out. So you can stop in the visitor center and learn more about the ecology of this area. And then outside there are some areas for the kids to play, like a zip line and things like that. So we had aspirations to go to the lighthouse on the southern part of the island. We wanted to take one of the uh, horse carriages there, um, but the one that we talked to, he said he doesn't go that far. So we didn't have enough time to take the bus. We wouldn't have enough time to get there and uh, to, catch on, our, to catch our next ferry. To catch our ne next ferry. So we ended up just going to the beach. Mm -hmm. So we're here at the beach hanging out. Um, it's not a super warm day, but it still is really nice to just come out here, sit down, and relax. relax. Because sometimes the things you don't really plan for are the best things. Three, two, one, go! So we're finishing up our time here at Hidden Z. I think we really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it was really cool to walk around this island and see the quaint little towns that are here. I think definitely if you do come, come early. Come mm -hmm. very early so that we have enough time uh, because the, we're taking the last ferry back. Mm -hmm. and it is like 5.45. Mm -hmm. So you can't really stay too late here if you want to use the ferry uh, unless you're staying the night here, which you can. So if you do come here, make sure to bring bikes or rent bikes uh, because the bus and the horse carriage, um, the schedule is kind of unpredictable and it may not take you to everywhere on the island that you want to go. So it's really nice to, to bring your own bike. Today we are going to visit the aquarium that's here in Stralsund. It is right before you get to the island of Rügen. So we are going to check out some animals and Griffin is so excited. You ready? Here, turn around. Tell me. Um, I'm ready for aquarium. I have to go in there. We have to go in there? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. So from the reviews we saw online, this is supposed to be a really good aquarium. It is also rated as the European Museum of the Year. So let's check it out. There is this really cool kids area on the roof of this aquarium. Um, it's got penguins and water play and a slide. Such a cool thing to have in an aquarium. 
and while your kid is playing, you get to see the awesome view of this city. Is it cold? Yeah. So we just finished the Ozaneum and I think we both were really surprised. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Yeah, very neat, very neat. At first, uh, the first part was just a museum, so there mm -hmm. weren't, wasn't any live fish or marine life. So at first I was kind of concerned that the rest of it was going to be like that. Yeah. But then we got to the part where they had all of the fish uh, and it had all the marine life from the Baltic Sea and then another section with the North Atlantic. And so that was really cool. Griffin loved to see all the different fish. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved how they had a really big tank that they had what looked like a shipwreck. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. was one of the coolest uh, tanks. It was better than just seeing a bunch of fish swimming around in a tank. They were like swimming through the shipwreck so it kind of felt like you were looking at fish in the ocean yeah and so but i think the best part was the very end mm -hmm. yeah you go into this giant room and it's kind of dark and then above you you have uh all these different whales that are life-size mm -hmm. and you can just lay on these recliners and look up and, and kind of see how small you are compared mm -hmm. to the whales yeah it was very calming griffin loved it at one point, he was like laying back, closing his eyes, and he said, I love this. And I was like, me too. <laughs> and it was it was awesome. Yeah, so next, I think we're just gonna walk around the city mm -hmm. and get a bite to eat, but I would definitely recommend coming here to see the Ozaneum. Now we're going to check out the Yasmond National Park, which is here on the island of Rugen. So this national park is unique because it features the chalk cliffs and also the beech wood forest. So you can't drive your car there to uh, the visitor center. You have to take either a bus from this town called Hagen or I believe from Sosnitz. So here in Hagen at the uh, big parking lot at the ticket counter, you can get a three in one ticket, which pays for the bus there, the parking and the entrance into the national park and that visitor center. This is one of the most famous parts about the island of Rugen, or the chalk cliffs. So I'm looking forward to go see that. So you can walk on the sky bridge out to the end and see the dramatic chalk cliffs. Uh, it is pretty cool. The, the sky bridge is shaking because it is a little windy. So if you're scared of heights, you may be a little frightened by that, but it is pretty impressive. In the visitor center, they do have a movie that plays like every 20 minutes about the national park. They also have a gift shop and things like that. Uh, we're gonna go and do some hiking to explore uh, some of the nature here. There's also a little restaurant here if you want to get some food and drinks. And they also have a pretty cool playground here. So at the corner of the parking lot where the buses drop you off for the visitor center, there is a trailhead. So we're gonna start hiking there and try to get another viewpoint of the chalk cliffs. Now this is an even better view than the sky bridge. So I was just talking to Maria. We think that this is our sixth national park here in Germany. We've been to the Bavarian Forest, uh, Berchtesgarden, Saxon, Switzerland, Black Forest. Yesterday we went to the, uh, the one that's up here also, I forget the name. Uh, we definitely wanna try to get to 10 national parks before we leave here.
after hiking 3.2 kilometers, we have finally made it to the stairs that is gonna take us down to the beach to see these beautiful chalk cliffs. We are walking up to this beach now. We are so excited. I say I slept the whole way. I did not give mommy any issues. So now we're gonna check out this beach. How awesome! They made it! Now look at these stairs we gotta do. So I think this has been a really cool hike. I would say forget about going to the visitor center and paying money for that and just hike like an hour to hour and a half like we did to this beach you can get right up next close to the cliffs and it has a much better view than at the visitor center so now we're just going to hike back to the car and try to find a place to eat for tonight so we'll catch you guys tomorrow at our last day here on the island of rugen so today we are at cape arcona this is really close to the beach that we went to on the first day at this location it's known for its lighthouses. So we're gonna go check out, I think there's three lighthouses um, and you have to either uh, bike, um, ride this tram mm -hmm. or a carriage to get there. Or you can walk. Or you can walk, mm -hmm. but you can't drive there. Mm -hmm. So you can park here at this small town called Rugenhof and you can get a combination ticket to take you on the tram there and back for five euros per person or kids under six are free. Um, so we're gonna go check out these lighthouses and then walk to another nearby fishing village, which is supposedly really scenic. Um, that's called Fit. So follow along with us as we check this out. The history of this little village is very cool. It used to be an old fisherman's village where they would fish and it was only used for like cleaning the fish and catching fish. Another unique thing about this little town is there are only 13 thatched roof houses where fishermen and their families live. Another wild thing is they did not have water here to their homes until 1980. So this is the water pump that they would use to get water and take it to their home to wash dishes, to bathe. How crazy is that? They do have a few restaurants down here by the water and a really cool beach with a lot of rocks and a beautiful view of the cliff with the lighthouse. So next we're gonna walk 1.4 kilometers from Fit to Cape Arcona. That's where the lighthouses are. And if you don't wanna walk, there is horse-drawn carriages that you can take that'll take you from Fit to the Cape Arcona. It only took us about 20 minutes to walk from Fit to the first lighthouse, which was a lot shorter than we thought. Okay, so it's three euro to go up to this first lighthouse. So I'm gonna go up to the top. So this first lighthouse um, all the way up to the top is also a store. I'm selling clothing and jewelry and odds and ends. So that's kind of different.
think for three euro, that's not bad to be able to come up to the top of this lighthouse. So now let's go check out the next one and see if it's better. Now we're gonna take the short walk to the next lighthouse over in Capricona. I was telling Lucas that this is just such a short walk. It looks like it's such a long walk, so you buy the train tickets, but you could easily do this all by walking. Since Lucas got to go up into the other lighthouse, I'm gonna go up into this one, and it is three euro to go up inside. Made it to the top of the lighthouse. Ooh, it was a lot of stairs. They had a stair counter, and I think it was like 150 stairs to the top. It was really hard, but I'm really glad I did it. You get an awesome view of the surrounding area and the water. It is just so beautiful up here and it is just a beautiful day. Our last stop here at Cape Arcona is the little town of Rugenhof. It has a cute little cafe there we want to check out. It's a British cafe and some shops. In this town of Rugenhof, there is this really cute British cafe that I saw on Google Maps and I was like, we have to go there. So we have got two scones with cream and marmalade and a butter, uh, no, a caramel shortbread. I also got a chai tea latte. I just feel like I am back in London. And I also got Griffin a ice chocolate, which is pretty much like a chocolate milkshake. He says it tastes like a Kinder Egg. Is it yummy? Good. All right, just finished up at the cafe. It was so good. The scones were super yummy and the shortbread was very tasty. Now we're gonna walk around this little town and check out the shops before they all close and just see what we can find. We finished up at the Cape Arcona area, and now we are gonna head to a beach that is really close to here and just spend the rest of our evening here at the beach and just letting Griffin play and enjoy our last evening here. We are at the beach now, but our experience checking out Cape Arcona was awesome. We loved getting to take the train around and seeing the old fishing village of Fit. We also loved walking on the path to the two lighthouses in Cape Arcona. It was super cool getting to go up and see the view of the area and finishing up at the Rugenhof town with the yummy British cafe and just looking at all the cute shops. So we are finishing up our week here on the island of Rugen and we have had a fantastic time. I know that beaches and islands are not the first thing you think of whenever you hear about Germany, uh, but we have been pleasantly surprised and this has been a great vacation. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for following along with us this week as we checked out some of the top things to see and do here in and around this island. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you've been here before uh, to this island, just leave a comment below and talk about your favorite things you've gotten to do here and some other travel recommendations here in germany and thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time like and subscribe